All right, back again, Luke here. And today, as you can see in front of you, I am working on another arcade PCB. And this one is a bit less documented, so I figured we could go over this a little bit and I try to give you uh, a little bit of some information that I found out. Hopefully this will help others. This is an Operation Wolf 3 uh, arcade PCB. Now, if you look online, you won't find a whole lot of information about this particular hardware or this board in general. Uh, it's quite uh, nowadays, I'd say it's a bit rarer to find, but a few things that I found out working on this board, uh, I might actually include a couple of clips that I put before of me repairing this or working on it. But a couple of things that I found out about this board I figured I'd share with you guys in this video. Um, it's not a kind of step-by-step -step like some of my other repair videos, but we'll just kind of walk through it and I'll show you guys what I've done with this board so far and some problems and things like that. Uh, one thing about this board when I got it, it was completely dead. I mean, it came up to a black screen. There was absolutely nothing, no sound, uh, nothing at all. And after taking a look at the bottom of the board, it had a lot of uh, scratches on the bottom and it had points that were touching together. Uh, another key point for this one is it had one of these notorious timekeeping batteries uh, or timekeepers in it. And with the timekeeper, if the battery dies in it, you wind up losing all the information. So I instantly thought, okay, maybe it was the timekeeper. So I reprogrammed a new timekeeper, put it in, it still did nothing. Uh, the board was still flat. I did notice that when I got the board, it was listed as junk and not working. So I figured, okay, I'll still give it a shot and try it out. But because it wasn't working at all, uh, even with this, I started to think maybe it had some major issues. And it did. It had light, a lot of different problems with it. Uh, going over here, one of the, the biggest things, like I said, with the timekeeper, if this board doesn't have a timekeeper in it, it won't turn on, um, plain and simple. Some boards use the timekeeper in order to keep score or in order to just kind of save settings. This one uses it to boot. So if you don't have a timekeeper, it won't turn on. So keep that in mind if you own this board. Uh, make sure you get one that's programmed and if everything else is okay, it should work. Another thing about this board is this top part here. This is where the guns connect. Uh, but it also, if you'll notice, has two PALs here. And these two PALs are essential for this board to, to uh, boot. So once again, if you don't have this top board, the board won't boot. So uh, I'm kind of going to be all over the place with this one. <laughs> uh, over here on the right, I guess this, uh, what is it? I can't read the number here. MB8421 uh, is a RAM chip and it's responsible for some of the text and some of the foreground graphics. Uh, it is a kind of strange pinout here and you can find these online. I believe I bought this one for about a thousand yen off of eBay. But uh, by replacing this, you can get most of your uh, text that you'll have in the game and uh, some of your foreground graphics by replacing this one. Also connected up here to this uh, F08 uh, and the LS393. Uh, uh, these are some chips actually I thought were responsible maybe in part uh, besides this one being bad. But after changing out these ones here, I found that uh, this one was actually the bad one. So it was hard to test. But yeah, those are that. These are the program ROMs. They can be burned to a 27C040. Uh, I believe they're listed as 27C4001, but uh, 040 will work. You can use these uh, ROMs and download them from the main program uh, ROMs. And you can just install those and put those in there. The one thing I found is I couldn't find any information online about the security PALs. So apparently these are still undumped. The security PALs for this board haven't been uh, made public. So if you have any problem with the security PALs, there's one here. There's two up here. And underneath this, there are actually uh, two more. And this one you can see it's kind of wrinkling up. But 071 something dash one two zero seven four dash one two I believe is the way that is there's another pal here and another pal here but with these uh, these ICs they haven't been dumped yet so um, yeah unfortunately if you're missing those you may be out of luck uh, as far as what was wrong with this board it's a, it's quite a lot there were three ICs that were wrong the first one here was a TC 0650 
uh, FDAIC, and the problem with the original one was that it was uh, internally burnt out and shorting. So when checking the uh, power on this, checking the positive and negative, they were automatically bridged. Some things that can happen with these Taito boards is that if the amp goes out, uh, it can cause the plus and minus to bridge. But in that case there, it wasn't the amp, it was actually this IC. So removing that uh, allowed the game to boot to static and after that it didn't do anything so the next thing that I came across here was this uh, Taito what is this one and this one's a bit more uh, TC0640 this was also responsible for the game and uh, getting the program to or getting the game to start running the program without this IC the the board was still dead so Replacing this, got the game to boot, and uh, I'll probably try to include a clip in here, maybe around this time, to show you guys what it was doing after replacing these two ICs. And you guys can probably see that now. All right, so after changing out the RAM here, you can see this one is to set gun number one. Gun number two, you can see it's still missing some graphics in the notice section. You can see the Taito logo kind of fits up there. But the uh, letters here are perfect, which is good, but there's no skull in the background, so the background graphics are still missing. Uh, sounds are perfectly fine. And you can see this is now here. We've got this is perfect. We've got some of our graphics in the background as well as some enemy graphics, but we don't have a lot of the other graphics that are around the screen. Some lines in it as well. But it still looks a lot better than what it did before with the old RAM chip in there. And this here, as far as the background uh, for the map, it's all missing. So we'll have to get on that and see what we can do about fixing that. Might be uh, one of the flip-flops on the board, or uh, one of the mask ROMs that's gone bad, or one of the custom chips here. So I'm going to have to check and see which one I can find out. But it's getting there. It's almost there. This is where the, you can normally see the two characters on the side, but they're missing. And this one's starting to show. But the, uh, the fire in the bottom is kind of gone, so... Yeah, as you can see here, so all of this is, is still missing. We're going to have to fix that. But this, you can at least see the guns are, you know, showing here too. But that's where we're at, guys. So we'll see what else we can do to figure this thing out and uh, get it working again. And hopefully you guys could see that there. But as you can see in the video, it was starting to play and it was showing some graphics, but the problem was is there were missing parts of the graphics. You could see that there were missing lines and backgrounds and uh, it was still a bit iffy. So that brought us down to this IC, which was the TC. 0480 SPC. This is responsible for the graphics. It's like a graphics generator. And this was the final uh, step here in order to get this thing running. This is the original one here. And uh, I removed the one that I had from a broken, I believe it was a broken, da, 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 what is it, double axle board. 
and uh, I didn't know if it was actually working properly or not on that old board because I only had the uh, half of that board. It was something that was listed as parts. So I, you know, just took a, a guess on it and removed this one. I resoldered this one back down again, and with the with a new timekeeper in place here, we can actually get the board to fire up now, and it will play. Uh, well, it seems to play perfectly fine, but I haven't hooked up any of the, the guns or anything like that yet. But just wanted to show you guys a little bit of a rundown on this board here. Like I said, there's not a lot of information on it, so if you guys are having trouble with it, these may be some of the problems. Uh, these RAM chips over here, I believe those were all responsible for the colors. And um, when I removed those, those were uh, the ones that were on the bottom were actually bent and the colors were off on it in the beginning. It was only showing like green and uh, yellow, but the red was gone. So, yeah, um, these are the the uh, what is it? Uh, Ram responsible for that. I know there's a lot of rambling going on here, too. So <laughs> bear with me, guys. Turn this on here. And it does take a few seconds, and I'm running it through my converter, so. There you guys can see, now it is absolutely perfect as far as the, uh, the graphics in this sense. I'm going to press the X and Y to max those out, max out these ones. And we get the notice here, which is perfectly fine. You can see the logo maybe flashing in the background, but as you guys can see here, this is what it should look like. There's going to be some strobing effects going on throughout this. And once again, keep in mind that I am using my CGA to VGA converter for this, just because Taito boards have a tendency to have uh, issues with sync. And it's usually caused by the sync uh, resistor. It's one that I haven't changed here, but here you can see. And all of our graphics are now back. Now, as far as I can tell, I may be wrong here, but it looks or it appears that everything seems to be working fine. I know that the size here of the screen is off. You guys can see the bullets on the side there. I'm aware that the, the size isn't the exact fit, but everything else here seems to be looking pretty good. But keep in mind, I may be wrong. There's a possibility I may be wrong with this. We're gonna let it run through just so you guys can see what it's doing. And it's not gonna look perfect with this converter in there in the first place, but it should at least give you guys an idea of what it's doing now compared to before. We do have our text there. Now this part, I mean, I don't really see the, yeah, I mean, maybe the background is supposed to be like that, um, a little bit staticky, I'm not sure, and or it could be my converter. But it does seem to look a lot better than it did before. So I'm taking a guess here and saying that this is pretty close to what it should look like. All of the information, um, or all of the text is back. The how to play is there. And this looks pretty good as well. But as you guys could hopefully see, if you couldn't see it in the middle there, maybe I'll uh, attach the video at the end if it didn't uh, fit in the center there. Where you guys can see the differences, the before and after. I'm not sure if I showed this part or not, but yeah, this was all a bunch of kind of garbage as well. But yeah, nevertheless, just wanted to share with you guys a little bit of a look at what this uh, setup here looks like. And like I said, there may still be a few, few graphic issues with it. I'm not sure. I haven't really tried it. Um, 
you know, tried it out yet. Hit the old start button here just to see how it looks. But for me, it seems like it's working out okay. And I won't be able to use my my gun here except for just shooting like this. You can see over here. Yeah. I don't think I can do anything else. I pushed player two there. Um, So yeah, I mean, it seems like it's working for the most part. Okay, so after going back and taking a look at that video again and letting this thing run, I noticed that that was a uh, pretty big problem with the screen. The image had a lot of black dots in it, and usually I've seen that kind of situation before with RAM issues or with custom chips, but since I'd replaced the two custom chips, especially this one over here, I thought maybe it could be the RAM. So what I did is I removed this RAM here, and when I removed it, the graphics almost got like 100% better. But then when I put it back in or I put some new RAM in it got worse again So I was trying to probe around and see what I could find as far as like issues were going with this RAM um, Which pin I could take out in order for this to work and it looks like all of the other pins here are very active Along all of these uh, data lines and IO lines or sorry the address lines and IO lines here but at the very end here for some strange reason if I leave uh, the what is it? Uh, pin 15 plugged in here. It would just start uh, turning like, you know, that grainy look again. So what I did is kind of a course of action. I removed the pin from the socket here. And uh, when doing so, I accidentally wound up removing the pin from the, uh, the RAM here. But by doing that, I was able to get this thing to start back up again. Now, I did realize that this is somehow tied into some of the uh, the graphics. Maybe it's tied into a bit of the overlay. But uh, removing it or putting it back in honestly has no effect, at least on the first few stages. Uh, after that, I, have, I haven't really had a chance to play through it, so I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference on it or not. But this was connected to this MC... 74F245 and then the 245 went into this custom here and I thought maybe the uh, 245 was bad so I traced it back I removed the 245 and still same problem but as soon as I took out that pin it seems like we've got things much much better uh, once again like I said it's just it's one pin I don't know how much it's gonna affect the overall performance of the board but it does look a lot better and I'll show you guys that here now so you can see what it looks like. Um, there were a few things that were happening before, if you guys remember. One of the biggest ones was that, uh, you, you'll notice that the guns, the screen here is a little bit off as well. And that's just the, the size. One thing I should show you guys here is that, uh, where is it? This is another thing that I wound up changing out. So I'm not using my CGA to VGA converter. I've actually changed out the resistor that was here in order to get the sync to stabilize. This is something, I know it's an oversized resistor, but it's the only one that I had that was actually for this value, and I could get this thing to uh, stabilize. So the downside is that, um, yeah, it's a bit big and out of place here, and the screen is not perfectly centered, but uh, you can see the cursor up in the corner there. And the Taito logo here before was kind of flashing on and off, but now it's completely solid. And as you can see, this looks a lot, lot better. I mean, granted, I still may be missing something here, like a little bit of uh, some overlay. I'm not sure if there's a, a, yeah, a small bit of graphics that aren't being shown. But it still does look a huge, uh, like a, a ton better for uh, the way that it is now compared to before. Hopefully you guys can see the difference as well. Like, um, the background and everything like that, I mean, I really don't notice it. Maybe you guys, once again, maybe you guys will see something that I didn't see here. But I've been, you know, staring at this, this screen here, watching it after changing out the RAM and then doing various things to it just to see, okay, is this better? Is it worse? You know, and it does look better once again. So, 
This one here, it's gonna have a really dark hue and that's just the camera. But it does look a lot clearer, like especially if you look around here where the uh, airport is, that was all kind of glitched out a little bit too dark and had a lot of uh, spots in it, so. Hopefully you guys can see here. This is what was pretty rough before. Now it's kind of clear. It's cleared up. You can actually see the characters much, much better. And you can see this in some of the, the main ones, as far as the ones on uh, that I've seen the videos for, there were a few streaks that were going through there. But I think this does look much better than before. Once again, not sure if it's perfect or if it's, you know, about standard or whatnot. But from here it looks good. This looks pretty decent, I think, as well. And I'll try and let it roll through just so you guys can see a bit of a comparison before and after here. This was another one where you could really see some of the things going on in the game. Especially when the missile launches out. Uh, the first spot, I think, on the left-hand side, there were a lot of kind of black dots in the uh, in here but now that's pretty much solid and the trees look like they're back everything looks like it's for the most part back to normal but I'm gonna have to make a video on this actually playing it I have to do some gameplay this here isn't flashing anymore like it was with the kind of really strange strobe effects and I'll have to make another video try it out from beginning to end and see how it works out but yeah, guys, uh, just want to share this update with you here, and that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. Watching some more mad repairs.